A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, seven weeks of years shall you count, seven times seven years, so that the seven cycles amount to 49 years. Then on the 10th day of the seventh month, let the trumpet resound. On this, the day of atonement, the trumpet blast shall re-echo throughout your land. This 50th year you shall make sacred by proclaiming liberty in the land for all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you when every one of you shall return to his own property, every one to his own family, estate. In this 50th year, your year of jubilee, you shall not sow nor shall you reap the aftergrowth or pick the grapes from the untrimmed vines. Since this is a jubilee which shall be sacred for you, you may not eat of its produce, except as taken directly from the field. In this year of jubilee, then, every one of you shall return to his own property. Therefore, when you sell any land to your neighbor, or buy any from him, do not deal unfairly. On the basis of the number of years since the last jubilee, shall you purchase the land from your neighbor. And so also, on the basis of the number of years for crops, shall he sell it to you. When the years are many, the price shall be so much the more. When the years are few, the price shall be so much the less. For it is really the number of crops that he sells you. Do not deal unfairly then, but stand in fear of your God. I, the Lord, am your God. <laughs> O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. The earth has yielded its fruits. God our God has blessed us. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. Dominus Vobiscum, et cum spiritus tuum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matthäum, Gloria Divi Domine. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, this man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. 
Now Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at the birthday celebration of Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guest and delighted Herod so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given, and he had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl, who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took her away, and took away the corpse and buried him. And they took and they and they went and told Jesus. Verbum Domini. All of us have seen a beer commercial or some kind of commercial for promoting alcohol. And when we see these, uh, these advertisements, we usually see somebody who's giving the party. You know, it's a, it could be a party scene at the beach or at somebody's home. And the person who's, uh, who's hosting this celebration uh, is often the one who's the man of the hour, the one who's the most popular because he's satisfying everybody. He's giving everyone what they want. And this is the story here with Herod. Herod was fixed on giving people what they wanted. Why? So that he could gain recognition, affection, and much attention. For him, it was all about pleasing the crowd and making people happy, no matter what the consequences were, are. Well, we, we too sometimes fall into this trap and maybe we're, we're not going around murdering people or killing or, or harming them as, uh, as Herod was doing here, but we kind of harm people or murder people in different ways. Sometimes it is through killing their reputation. Sometimes damaging their spiritual life. And we can do this in numerous ways and not even realize it. And with Jesus, Jesus calls us to be like himself, to live and to love like him. This is our call as Christians, to be like Christ. But it's, you know, it's difficult living out in the world. You know, we're, we're surrounded by so many pressures. Um, but, you know, there's uh, all the trends out there. We have our our friends, our relatives, who are constantly influencing us. And it's so it can be difficult to make the right decision, to do the right thing at times, because of the pressures that surround us. Now, in this uh, story we read here, I mean, it's it's a very, there's there's a large difference between the life of Jesus and John and the life of Herod. Now, this is the beginning of chapter 14 of Matthew's Gospel. In chapter 13, we just heard about Jesus doing righteous deeds, as he always does, but about him being rejected. Jesus is not concerned about who receives him or who doesn't. You know, he's out to do the will of the Father because he loves the Father and he loves us. So nothing stops him, even rejection even not receiving that attention, that affirmation that, you know, we can so, so much desire, so much crave. And then Herod, however, he wants it all. He doesn't care what the consequences are. And so we can look at our lives and look at the, at the, at the things that we do on a, on a daily basis. We, well, we're, we're around our family, we're around our friends, we go to work, we're in the, in the midst of our coworkers, and certain situations come up that would affect us from receiving the, 
attention, the affirmation, and the recognition that we so crave and desire at times. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but I'm saying that if it causes us to compromise our walk with God, then we gotta do something else. You know, then we gotta move away from the crowd. But in daily life, we get phone calls. We sit at lunch rooms, and sometimes we hear gossip, you know, damaging information that would kill someone's reputation. You know, and then we consent to this talk. We listen to it, and by, and by listening to it, we are saying, hey, it's okay, yeah, you're right. What we ought to do is hang up the phone, or say, well, or say politely and, and truthfully, say, well, I, I don't agree with this, and you know, we, we can talk at a later time when we have something good to talk about. Or we can say when we're with, we're with the fellas, with, with the guys, you know, and, and here they go, starting to talk about women, flirting with women. You know, we, we don't need to engage in that. Here comes the dirty jokes. You know, step aside. Stand up for Christ, you know, and do something else. Excuse yourself. And then, you know, there's other things as well. Giving scandal in any way. If there's, if there's anything we are doing that is perhaps uh, distracting somebody or tempting somebody, we ought to do something else. Sometimes we can, we can give scandal when we're, uh, with, with the things we we watch on, on television with the things we may be wearing um, or uh, you know, some of our actions, the words we say, how we talk about people, the negativity that comes out of our mouth. You know? Now, all of this, overcoming these things is very difficult. And you know, uh, escaping these pressures is hard. But all things are possible with the Lord. God will help us as long as we're fixed on doing his will. As Jesus, as we saw Jesus here in the Gospels, because he was so much in love with God, with his Father. He loved his Father so much. He loved us so much that, you know, that, that, that's, that's what it was all about. Doing the will of the Father. Serving and loving mankind. And this has to be our heart's desire. Today we... We, uh, we continue in our devotion of uh, the first uh, five Saturdays devotion, and we look to the example of, of uh, the Virgin Mary. At first, you know, here she is. She's given this, this task. You know, she says, okay, well, you will be the mother of God, the mother of, of, of the Christ. And then instead of turning away, she says, well, what are the crowds going to say? Because I'm a... I'm a young woman, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pregnant, and I'm not, I'm not married. What, what, are, what are they gonna think of me? But immediately she responds in faith. She says, yes. And then, and then she says, nothing will be impossible with God. And then we look to uh, years later when, when Jesus is about to begin his public ministry. What is she so fixed on? Doing the will of God and evangelizing, and you know, saying, do whatever he tells you. You know, it's all about her son now. And then she loves him all the way, of course, through the cross. She loves us all in eternity. She prays for us. So we can learn much from the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Nothing is impossible with God. Do all things he tells you to do. You know, someone who's, whose love was always Who's always, whose first love was always the Lord. And so, you know, today we can, we look at the example of, of course, Jesus the Lord and, and John the Baptist. You know, this is what kind of gave fuel to the early Christians as they were persecuted and as they were uh, tortured and killed. You know, they, they, they saw these examples here the, of, of John, you know, this story here, they heard it over and over again. And, and this gave them much more courage encourage them to do all things for the love of Jesus Christ, even if it meant losing some friends, even if it meant losing some popularity because of love of Christ. So today, let's look at the examples we have of faith. 
those, those people of faith who, who put their trust in God, believing that all things are possible with the Lord. You know, people like John, Jesus, like our, our Blessed Virgin Mother. And we can be assured that, that we will always have the victory, that God will always, will net with that, God will always uh, bring out what is hidden in darkness, that, he will al- that his truth will always prevail, and that he will never let any of his close ones, of his, of his followers, his believers, of his sons and daughters be put to shame. God bless you.